Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is from the Gospel of John. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, at a loss to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at the table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, Buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the news to the Jews, where I, where I go you cannot come, so now I say to you. St. Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going you cannot follow me now, though you will not follow me later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our meditation today is from St. John of Avila. The greater the good we possess, the deeper is our debt towards the Almighty, and the stronger reason have we to blame ourselves for not corresponding to such signal mercies by more generous service, and to greater graces with a warmer gratitude. He who is taught by divine truth attributes nothing to himself, save his sins and his own nothingness. If all that God gave us at our creation, and which by his power he daily sustains, were drawn from us, there would remain only nothingness, and we should return to the nothingness from which we were formed. And if God took from us the grace which he bestows on us for the sake of Jesus Christ, what would the most holy among us be but what Peter was when he denied our Lord, or Paul when he persecuted his Redeemer? We know but too well what we were before God touched our souls and taking from us our old hearts, gave us new ones in their stead. Justification is nothing but the resurrection of a soul which was dead in sin, and henceforth exists by the life which God infuses into, in, into it through the death of his blessed Son. It would be madness if the body attributed its animation and power of motion to itself, and not to the spirit which dwells in it and quickens it. And the soul is as blind, which thinks that its good works come from its own abilities, and not from the supernatural life divinely bestowed on it. Sometimes such presumption draws down chastisement from heaven, and the gifts possessed by the soul are withdrawn, so that it finds it itself unable to see, to hear, to take pleasure in religious matters, or to perform the good actions it was wont to do. Thus the Christian soul discovers that it was another being who gave it the spiritual life which it did but receive, and that without the grace of Jesus Christ, it is like a corpse from which animation has fled. As you know, um, this week is the holiest of weeks, Holy Week, as we prepare for the death and resurrection of our Lord on Easter Sunday. This week, I think what we need to keep central is that of what keeps us from God. 
over this past week, uh, there have been several events in my life that have made me reflect on this very truth. I would tell you that if we return back to original sin, the sin of Adam and Eve, it was pride that kept them from God. It was pride that possibly caused Adam to choose to not tend the garden of life. And I think it is pride that keeps us from tending our own garden of life. I find that pride is something uh, very deceiving, much like the snake. And, um, and I think uh, we need to pray, pray on a daily basis for humility. I mean, how many times do we think that the many good things that we do, that even we desire, are because we're simply good or gifted? But when we do that and not recognize who it is that gives us that gift of understanding, that gift of desire, that gift of knowledge, whatever gift it is, if we do not surrender it and give thanks to God for that grace of the gift, then we remain prideful. We remain, even apart from God, even though we may think we're doing the work of God. The other part to the story is the life of Peter. You now here we have the Peter that we'd like to remember, which is the Peter who was uh, the first Pope, uh, the great leader of the early church, um, the man who uh, was willing to be crucified upside down because he wasn't worthy to be crucified right side up but there's the other Peter the Peter that not only denies our Lord once nor twice but three times the Peter that was weak the Peter uh, that maybe often spoke out of turn the Peter that our Lord had to rebuke as Satan for what he had said we often like to forget about that, Peter. What we have to come to understand as human beings is that there's a little bit of Peter in all of us. The Peter that was prideful, the Peter the denier, along with Peter who was profoundly faithful and, and was willing to go to the cross for the sake of the mission of Christ. Let us journey onto this Easter day in a few days from now with holy and humble hearts and constantly pray to God for the humility, humility and a heart full of thanksgiving for all the things he has done and to realize that without him we would merely be a dead corpse who would not have any life in us and would be left to our own sins. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time in prayer. I want to pray for all those in our book of prayers, all those in need of you, Lord, all those moms uh, that have um, children within their wombs, preparing uh, to give them birth someday soon for those troubled pregnancies, for those women who suffer with infertility, for all those that don't know you, Lord, or have uh, fallen away from you, for all those of us who have prideful hearts, Lord, grant us deep and profound humility, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for your grace, your love, and your mercy. Please, Lord Jesus, help us. Help us this week this most holy of weeks, to prepare our hearts for you. In Jesus' most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.